Well, the nuclear disaster in Japan has raised a question. Can it happen here? Let's bring in our next guest. Chris Kadomsky is the lead nuclear analyst at the Bloomberg division that covers energy markets. Chris, good to see you. You and I happened to meet on Monday as well. You were on my show. But um, tell me, how much more serious has this situation become in just the last few days? <clears throat> well, I was uh, pretty optimistic a few days ago that this pro project was going to be sort of have a, um, a, a happy solution or so. And uh, I, I've gotten a little bit more nervous lately. But I spoke to a lot of people um, you know, who are experts in radiation control, experts in, in, uh, in these types of uh, disaster management things. And they seem to sort of play down it that it seems to be that the to uh, TEPCO is doing everything they possibly can within reason and that the risk of uh, a disastrous you know, uh, development uh, are, are, are limited. You know, by all accounts, the Japanese are very well prepared for these types of natural disasters. However, some of the, what we're seeing with the cooling efforts are quite unusual. I mean, now they have two helicopters that are, are dumping water to cool these reactors. Do you think these attempts are going to be successful, and what's the worst case? Well, the, the thing that we really want to do is you want to keep those um, that, that spend fuel and those reactors cool, okay? If they overheat, they boil, they get exposed, and they can melt down eventually, okay? So we need to keep water circulating down there, and we need to keep the reactors, that, uh, those, those fuel assemblies as cool as we possibly can. The attempts to drop water from helicopters, I think they tried to do that and they are no longer doing that because there wasn't a good proximity. But the key is, is getting water to flow through there to go ahead and keep to cool down the, those, things, those uh, fuel assemblies because there's a lot of residual heat that continues to be given off by those things and keeping them cool is really key that we really want to do. This project will stabilize once we get uh, uh, AC power to the units and we can maintain uh, an effective plan to control and continue cooling those as, as uh, good as we can. All right. Now, taking events in Japan and looking at how they may apply to reactors here in the U.S., we do have reactors sitting on fault lines. Do you expect the government will re-examine whether those reactors should stay open? And they should absolutely re-examine that because this is part of how the nuclear energy industry grows and and, and manages its, its, its assets. <clears throat> it would be foolish for us to not to look, uh, reassess what has happened in Japan to make sure that our procedures are in place and that we have um, proper controls implemented to make sure that something similar does not happen. Don't forget, this country went through a terrible situation after 9-11, and as a result of that, the nuclear power industry is really focused on maintaining uh, uh, emergency alertness and preparedness, and uh, if there's a silver lining in the cloud, that's it, that we, uh, the industry is very, very focused on making sure something similar does not happen. Answer me this, a meltdown sounds absolutely catastrophic. Will it be in this situation and how quickly will it happen if it does happen? Well, if, we, if you lose all the water in the pools, uh, it, it could progress to, to, to having a, a meltdown or so. And uh, it, could be, you know, it could approach, therefore, uh, something worse than um, uh, Three Mile Island. Don't forget, Three Mile Island was a partial core meltdown. No one, was, no one died. There was limited amounts of radiation um, released. And the design of the reactor worked as it was supposed to, and that the, the contamination was largely contained within the containment vessel. How much notice, though, will, will people have? have before we go from the current situation, an explosion, a fire, to a complete meltdown. <clears throat> That's probably one of the most frustrating things that people in the West are dealing with in, in, as far as this reactor is that we thrive on having information and that information is not easily forthcoming and makes a lot of people nervous. We don't have adequate access to the radiation levels in the areas and if we had that we'd be able to better monitor and make decisions to help us manage what we need to do next and it's a frustration and people are want, want that information but uh, I spoke to people who are experts in the field and they're telling me that the Japanese are doing everything they possibly can to make sure that uh, the situation doesn't go out of control. It's chaos over there in many, many ways. They're dealing with many different types of problems in several different reactor sites. All right, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the insight. That was Chris Godomsky. He's the lead nuclear analyst on Bloomberg's new energy finance team.